In this video, I want to talk about how we can actually go ahead and statistically test for significant correlation if we're dealing with sample data. So the sample correlation between two data sets, X and Y, is given by the sum from I equals 1 to N of XI minus X bar times YI minus Y bar. And that's all divided through by the square root of the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar, or squared, times the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi minus y bar, or squared. OK, so let's just talk a little bit about what the intuition is behind this particular expression here. So the idea here is that if we have our data sets x and y, and they are positively correlated with one another. So if we were to fit a sort of line, it would look something like that through our data. And if we imagine there being some sort of sample average of x, which we call x bar, and some sample average of y, which we call y bar, then we can think about what this expression here is actually going to output. So if you imagine here that x is above x bar, so that's somewhere over in this region, then xi minus x bar is going to be positive. And if x is above its average, it's also likely that y is above its average because we find ourselves on this region of the graph here. So yi minus y bar is also going to be positive. So this whole expression up here is going to be positive. And it turns out because of the Cauchy Schwartz inequality that at the upper limit, r is bounded by plus 1. So r is always less than or equal to plus 1. OK, so let's now think about the circumstance where there is no correlation between our two data sets. So the idea here is that let's say we were to fit a line and it looks something like this. And we had our x bar and let's say our y bar. Well then here what we could see is that it doesn't matter whether x is above its mean or below its mean. So it's not necessarily the case that yi minus y bar is either positive or negative. So in this circumstance here, these two expressions are roughly going to cancel one another out, and we're going to get r is being approximately zero in this circumstance. I should have mentioned for the top example, if x was below its mean, so that's somewhere in this region of the graph, then x i minus x bar is going to be negative, but then so is y as well. So y i minus y bar is also going to be negative, which means that this whole expression is again going to be positive. So again, we get r being somewhere near 1. OK, and let's lastly think about the last circumstance we can think about, which is when there is negative correlation between x and y. If there is negative correlation between x and y, then what we see is if x is above its mean, so it's somewhere down here, then xi minus x bar is going to be positive. But if x is above its mean because of this negative correlation between the two data sets, that means that y is likely below its mean. So yi minus y bar is going to be negative. And similarly, we could construct the argument the same way around if yi was above y bar, um, that would mean then that x was likely below its mean. So in this last circumstance, these two products of these two terms here in the numerator are likely going to be of negative sign, which means that we're going to have r being negative. And again, because of the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality, we can show that r is always going to be greater than or equal to minus 1. It's minus 1 in the circumstance where they are perfectly negatively correlated. OK, so that's how you calculate the, the correlation coefficient in a sample. So we know that in a sample, minus 1 is always less than or equal to the sample covariance, or sorry, correlation, which is less than or equal to plus 1. But how do we actually go ahead and test for significance of the correlation? So remember what we're doing here is what we're trying to do is to test whether in the population there is a correlation. So the null hypothesis here is that in the population, the correlation is zero. So rho is equal to zero, where rho represents the population correlation between x and y. And we're testing that against the alternative hypothesis which is just that rho does not equal naught. OK, so how can we actually go ahead and statistically test this? Well, it turns out we can construct a particular statistic, which is a t-statistic, 
which is given by r, the sample correlation, times the square root of n minus 2 over 1 minus r squared. And in the circumstance where the null hypothesis is true, this is distributed with a t distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. And if we were to draw a t distribution with sort of any degrees of freedom, then we could perhaps draw it as something like this. So it's centered around zero, and we could perhaps mark on our graph the sort of 95% confidence intervals, which is going to be somewhere like 1.6 and minus 1.6. I can't remember the exact values, but this is kind of um, indicative. So how does this particular statistic here actually allow us to test whether it is likely that uh, in the population there is actually a correlation or not? Well, if we think about the circumstance where r tends to 1, then this denominator here, 1 minus r squared, is going to tend to 0. And because 1 minus r squared tends to 0, that is going to mean that we've got some sort of number divided by something which is very, very small, so that means that the t statistic we calculate here is actually going to tend to plus infinity. So that's in the circumstance where r goes to plus 1. And that means that we're going to get a t value, which is somewhere to the right of the critical values. And what that means is, is it means that it's very unlikely that this result would have occurred by chance. In other words, it's very unlikely that this result would have occurred if it is the case in the population that there is no correlation between x and y. Similarly, if r goes to minus 1, then again, 1 minus r squared is going to go to 0 because we're squaring r, so it becomes 1. Then 1 minus r squared tends to 0. But then we've got this r on the top, which is going to mean that t is actually going to tend to minus infinity in that circumstance. So we're actually going to find ourselves in this bottom left corner of the t distribution. But again, we're going to reject the null hypothesis here because of the fact that our t statistic value is greater in magnitude than the critical value which we would have looked at in the table, something like 1.6 or 2. And then finally, if we think about the circumstance where r is equal to 0, then it's quite easy to see that t is just going to be 0 in this circumstance because we're multiplying everything in this expression by this r. So we're just going to find ourselves right in the middle of the distribution um, or our sampling distribution for the sample covariance, uh, correlation rather, which is going to mean that we're not going to reject the null hypothesis and we cannot conclude that there is significant correlation between x and y.